Okay, thank you so much. Um, good morning, everyone. So um, this presentation uh, is about, our, uh, I mean, the title, of course, of the paper is this one, but uh, um, it's a kind of summary of, uh, of the project, of the whole project. So I made this presentation as a kind of storytelling uh, from uh, the genesis uh, to the end and the conclusion we, we, we had. And the sponsor were ESA and the Swiss Space Center. Um, well, my name is Stefan Gebron and uh, I am from uh, HSSO, which is the University of Applied Science and Art of uh, Western Switzerland. It's not very famous, so on the Swiss map. Basically, uh, this university is covering 27 centers and uh, institutes, and uh, we are from the Acheuarch uh, in Neuchâtel. My specialty is definitely not uh, about what we've seen just before or Earth of Solution, and I will tell you why I'm here today. Um, I'm more about uh, real-time 3D uh, visualization and uh, computer graphics and uh, geometry and virtual reality and gamification, so it's quite far from what we've seen here. And especially uh, in this presentation, you will see that there is no about standards and everything that you've seen just before, I'm quite happy to, to add that because uh, we, we didn't use all that because everything was done on the very low level. We had to add uh, some very fast rendering and very fast computation, so it's very low level computation and, and programming. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, my speciality is much more uh, about health uh, domains, such as uh, this kind of rendering in real time uh, with uh, very high resolutions. Um, and uh, we actually use also very large data sets also for like PET scan or CT scans or MMR. MMR. Um, and, and one day, uh, like a couple of years ago, I met uh, Yann Vumar who is from uh, the company called uh, Solenix, also in Switzerland. And he's working quite a lot uh, with uh, ESA. And he told me, well, uh, what you are doing here, uh, this is not the kind of things we see often in, in our domain. That would be kind of nice if you can transfer uh, your technology uh, that you are doing in health for uh, of Earth observation. And uh, well, um, so I start uh, digging, and it is very true that uh, Earth observation data cubes um, are definitely uh, very large data sets also. And the commun community is much more about data scientists, and uh, uh, here are some examples of data cubes that you have, which is not the same that we had. So uh, we had to um, rethink everything in terms of uh, computer science architectures. Um, and there was also some plenty of new applied fields, so it's very uh, interesting for, uh, for us. Um, so when we started uh, this, this, uh, this project, um, we, we decided to, uh, to find out from the very beginning uh, a group of uh, uh, field uh, advisory uh, people and uh, we, uh, we found out seven institutes in the field that will follow up uh, from the beginning uh, to the very end and advise us uh, what they would need in the field of Earth observation uh, data. And this group uh, we met uh, quite uh, often. We did a lot of brainstorming all together and separately. And uh, we studied, developed and tested two user cases. Uh, to, uh, which were actually uh, very close related to uh, climate change uh, uh, issues. And also what we uh, realized is that uh, they were very, um, um, they, they would have liked uh, some, some tools uh, efficiently, uh, f the, the th oh, how's that? To make it efficient for them, they would have need some uh, application as a web app or uh, using Python uh, or um, Jupyter Notebooks. So this was also a challenge for us because uh, usually we were using some pure uh, um, uh, low-level uh, programming and uh, to integrate it uh, using Python was quite a challenge. So uh, here are the two use cases uh, we uh, decided to, uh, to, uh, to 
to, to study and to develop. Uh, the first one, uh, elevation and uh, time, uh, especially like floats issues. And uh, uh, we had to do some uh, uh, raster uh, analysis uh, using Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, and also uh, in terms of uh, um, geometric model, uh, recast implicit surface and the recast derived. That was the main uh, uh, models uh, we, uh, we developed. Please um, notice that all the um, graphics that you will see from now on, there's no triangle. It's, it's only a recast uh, uh, rendering and their uh, implicit uh, uh, surface uh, rendering. So there's absolutely no uh, triangle. It's too costly and it's too uh, uh, long if you want to uh, visualize uh, a very large uh, data sets. The second uh, use case we studied was uh, uh, about uh, agriculture. And uh, then that would uh, be uh, applied on a web application and especially uh, with implicit curves in 2D uh, and 3D, and also uh, a simulation of implicit uh, surface. So, um, of course, um, there's quite a lot of things that we, um, we did and I will not be able to, uh, to show and present every model we did. There, there's like 16 models we, we developed. Um, but um, I will show you basically the specification and directly jump uh, to the achievement. Um, so the specification, um, our university uh, was supposed to work uh, on the models and on Jupyter Notebooks application, on the web uh, application, um, also uh, on the true volumetric uh, renderings and uh, uh, on all the uh, 16 uh, novel models in terms of uh, application for Earth observation data cubes. And the Solenix company was making the link with all uh, the people uh, that was testing in the field and uh, um, um, making sure that, that we had some feedback all along so that we can change the programmings. Um, and also uh, the sharing for the open source uh, of the, the whole project. The achievement that we had, basically, uh, there was um, the pre-processing of the data. So, um, as you've seen on the previous uh, presentation, uh, we had a lake uh, of, of data. In our case, uh, it would be a kind of very uh, specific fish. Uh, on, on, uh, so, we were uh, aggregating uh, some kind of fish to make a very uh, a strange fish that would fit directly on the GP GPU so that it would go very fast on the rendering, basically. Um, and this, uh, this was about uh, an issue uh, with, um, with uh, WebGL1 uh, specification. Uh, recently, uh, because of actually one of the engineers that is just there, uh, we found out that with uh, WebGL2, we can actually skip this part and go even faster, and without uh, this pre-processing system. Uh, in terms of uh, volumetric rendering, we had all that. Uh, I, will, I will go on, on next slides about it. And uh, on the implicit surface, we had all these models too for the respective uh, uh, types of data cubes. Um, and then um, here are some sampling of uh, the achievement we have. And later I will um, show and dig on two specific uh, models. So uh, we succeeded to integrate a real 3D rendering on our Jupyter Notebooks with uh, Python and behind uh, WebGL. Uh, we also uh, succeeded to do uh, some uh, simulation of real implicit surface volumetric systems uh, and also um, um, on the fly color, color palette systems for users. Um, multi-layer uh, data so that you can add as many uh, texture and data that you want on your maps. Um, a 3D step-based rendering, that was fun. And another fun part was also to, uh, to start uh, uh, doing some uh, simulation of float uh, on, on the map. <clears throat> so here are some highlights for two specific models. Um, uh, the first one is uh, about derivative uh, model 
for uh, data queues with uh, X, Y, and T time. So the issue here is that uh, we, we had no, uh, not a lot of, of real 3D volumetric um, data to, uh, to work on. But we had quite a lot of data uh, with the Copernicus uh, uh, data sets about uh, X, Y, and time. So we thought, mm, what can we do in 3D with that? Um, and we, we tried uh, something quite fun. That was, uh, let's, uh, let's see time. Let's see the, the, the change. And let's try to make a, a specific 3D rendering, volumetric, where you can see the change depending of any uh, specific time that you'd select and any other region you can make the derivative and make it appear like positive value would be in red and uh, negative value let's say would be in blue and uh, uh, so we made the access uh, on the database and uh, here are some sampling and from this sampling we can have this kind of uh, rendering and, and you can see here, there's some, some reddish part and some blue part uh, showing uh, what was added uh, on this specific region, depending on, on this map and on bluish when that, what, what disappeared. Um, and you can also add multi-layer uh, layer, uh, data, like uh, um, here some info on, on the map, like uh, and accessing directly uh, Google Maps and stuff like that. Uh, the se second highlight uh, is about implicit uh, uh, curves. Um, the idea was to uh, make a, a recast, and when you make a recast, actually you can um, find out some, some uh, threshold, and for instance, uh, you can uh, have this kind of uh, um, results. Uh, all the dots are actually on, on, on a level, uh, each level, and, and um, the rendering that you can have from that is, is, is not that good. You, there's some gap and there is, there's some, some redundant uh, data and it can be an issue. So we try to find out something more like math based, even if uh, the rendering can be not that bad uh, and quite interesting. This is uh, in 2D, but you can actually map it on, on 3D. So uh, we uh, start to make a list of lists of for each levels. And uh, from, uh, for instance, uh, this list of points, we can find out uh, some key points and uh, have a reconstruction with uh, direct uh, segmentation. Or you can uh, use a Fourier series or um, other models such as Katman ron uh, models. And uh, well, the actual data that you add is this one. And sometimes there's quite a difference between um, the uh, parametric uh, reconstruction and uh, the original uh, data sets. So how uh, can we uh, validate that this model is better than the other one? Which uh, uh, parametric model to, uh, to, uh, would be the best? So what we did is that uh, we uh, uh, go, went through all the data in a very empiric uh, way of uh, uh, computing the errors, and we can find out that the catmulum was uh, quite uh, uh, the best and efficient uh, way to, uh, to make a very fast and computation and rendering. If I show you this uh, input data sets, uh, this is uh, the original data that you can, be, you can have, and this would be uh, the reconstruction with, uh, with uh, uh, implicit uh, curves, real implicit curves. Um, it's not just that it's the graphics is better. Um, the, uh, in terms of data, there's only 3% of the data here, left. 97% uh, just uh, is useless. And even better, the rendering is uh, uh, about uh, three times improved, and the access to the data set is multiplied around by uh, 50, uh, 50 time. Um, and even better, uh, the, the, the gap and uh, uh, the redundant uh, data can be partially solved. We can talk about that later if you want. Why I say partially? Anyway, uh, if you want to have uh, more detail about that, we, we were very uh, 
happy and lucky because uh, we we just been uh, published uh, and accepted to uh, to uh, journal for uh, both uh, of these uh, models uh, I've shown you. If you want a copy, I have a copy here for the implicit surface and uh, uh, for the um, derivative uh, um, 3D volumetric systems uh, using a Jupyter notebook. Anyway, um, oops, uh, I don't have the mouse, no, oh, it's not working, oh yeah, here it is. Um, so um, um, I will not show you directly a demo, but we have the computers here. So if you want to uh, to, uh, to to have some uh, live demo, we can we can do that uh, later on. Um, here are some in the ending words, uh, especially uh, feedbacks from the uh, field people uh, group. Uh, take a message and uh, um, some thanks. Um, I will not uh, show you all the things that uh, uh, the advisory group uh, point out and uh, would like to be improved, but they were quite uh, very happy and uh, uh, we, we determined uh, a list of, of, of stuff uh, with actually some, uh, some work to, uh, to do, which, which uh, total of, of at least six months of, of, of work. But uh, what I would like to point out on this slide is uh, this, this last stuff here is that we are still uh, lacking of, of data. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you are interested uh, by any collaboration or sharing some data, especially volumetric uh, data, uh, please do so because uh, we, we have no volumetric data in this field. It's only uh, on the medical field. Uh, here are some uh, take home messages. For the open source, uh, it's uh, Apache uh, license. For the real-time uh, data uh, visualization, we can render uh, up to one billion uh, cells in real-time, please, uh, uh, on a high-end uh, PC, not uh, on a, a low-level uh, graphics card. Uh, it's very convenient for the use because you can have an uh, application for a web app uh, that is working basically everywhere, even on your, on your, your mobile. Uh, uh, and you can also integrate it on Jupyter Notebooks with uh, Python uh, commands. Uh, furthermore, uh, for the improvement relative to data, uh, we, we, we have some um, uh, rendering, uh, compressing and accessing uh, data very fast and in a quite efficient way, I think. Um, and and uh, there are some potential structural issue resolving model that we can, uh, we can go on uh, on this one because I'm pretty sure we can actually uh, improve also the data sets uh, that, that you have with, with this model, with implicit surfaces. I would like to, to this is quite uh, odd because usually you don't thank yourself, uh, but I would like actually to thank uh, uh, the team member and uh, uh, all the people that are just there, uh, they are young and bright uh, students and young engineers, especially uh, Artan, Christophe, Mathias and, and Antoine, and also the Solenix team, and also uh, some people from uh, ESA, maybe you, you will recognize uh, Olivier and Giuseppe, and uh, all the advisory group uh, people from the seven institutes, and they're uh, a bit sad, uh, but uh, I must point out that uh, uh, this uh, presentation was also dedicated to um, Ron, uh, who died uh, last year, uh, just before the end of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the project. And he, he gave and provided a lot of, uh, of uh, advice, and uh, that was a great guy. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for your attention and, and for listening, and uh, if you have any questions, please do so. <laughs>